So now we cut out a little bit of the messy stuff and we just do an energy level diagram like this. Again, to memorize. We're starting off with that is the sigma 2s orbital and that's sigma 2s antibonding orbitals and at the 2s we fill these sigmas first and then when we get to the 2p's we know that we have pi bonds and we can have sigma bonds and we can form two pi bonds and one sigma bond when we have say something like a triple bond right remember that from the previous discussion on molecular orbitals and hybridization okay so we can fill the pi 2p's, then the sigma 2p, and then the pi 2p antibondings, and the sigma 2p antibondings. These are the ones to memorize. Here is the structure that you, maybe your teacher gives this to you, actually on the test, and then just has you fill it in. Well, if he does, then it's actually pretty simple. Watch this. So let's say we've got nitrogen molecule, N2. And of course, that's got 10 valence electrons because nitrogen's in group 5 times 2, 10 valence electrons in total. Now, if, we, if I said, well, okay, here's the question. Fill up this energy level diagram with those valence electrons and let's find out some things based on this energy level diagram in terms of bond order and then in terms of what we're going to call now magnetism, paramagnetism and diamagnetism. And then we can actually extrapolate from the bond order, too, to come up with bond strengths and bond lengths. Here it comes. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now watch, 5, 6, because they want to be occupying those, uh, those orbitals individually before we pair them up. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, that's nitrogen then. So what do we have in terms of what we would calculate for bond order? We've got two electrons in a bonding orbital, four, six, eight. Eight electrons here that are in bonding orbitals and only two in anti-bonding orbitals. So that, that are against bonding, right? So that's going to be eight minus two over two, and that's going to leave a bond order here of six divided by two is three. Nitrogen's bond order is three. So, definitely, N2 exists, and we know that it does, right? And as a matter of fact, when we draw a Lewis diagram for that, here's what you know, that that's really, looks like that, hey? Oh, okay, watch, watch. Oxygen would be 12. So what we do is we do this one here again, but then we go 11, 12. Now, here's the thing. There's unpaired electrons out here in these antibonding orbitals. And by the way, if they're both in antibonding, then that makes oxygen 8 minus 4 over 2, which is going to be 2. Hey, by the way, oxygen's double bonded, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Now, here's the thing about this, and I want to, to tell you about the magnetism part here. Before, when we had nitrogen, we only had this right here. The outermost, the, just to look at the outermost, the outermost electrons in this energy level diagram were paired up. When they're paired up, they're complete, they're full. Dia is a prefix for complete. And so here's what this means. Nitrogen was diamagnetic. And actually that means that you are repelled from a magnetic field. When you are completely full, you are repelled from a magnetic field. But Oxygen having unpaired outermost electrons in this molecular orbital energy diagram, that means it's paramagnetic. So if you've got a pair of them, and it's, un, it's unfinished, and it's not complete, it's paramagnetic, which means you are induced and attracted to an induced uh, magnetic field. Well, that's kind of cool. So that's what oxygen would be. Now, of course, fluorine would be 14, so that right there is 12, 13, 14. Complete, complete, so fluorine would be diamagnetic, repelled by a magnetic field, and by the way, that's going to be two more in the antibondings here for eight minus six over two, which is two over two, which is one. Ladies and gentlemen, fluorine has a single bond. Oh my, isn't that cool? Do all three of these molecules exist? Yeah, because 3, 2, and 1, that's all bond orders above 0, so they all exist. Now, the bond strength, nitrogen is going to have a bond strength 
that is higher than oxygens and higher than fluorines because of the bond order that's being suggested here. That's what bond order can tell you. And guess what? Triple bond, double bond, single bond. Yeah, sure. Triple bond is stronger than a double, which is stronger than a single. That's about 900 kilojoules of energy there, about close to 500, maybe 950 or so, close to 500 and close to 150. <laughs> and not only that, but here's the thing. You should know that a triple bond is shorter than a double bond, which is shorter than a single bond. And so when you get the bond orders here, that's the order of the strength of the bond, and it's also the inverse order of the length of the bond. Fluorine's bond here, single bond, is longer than a double, which is longer than a triple. Oh, that's really neat. So that's the information you can glean from doing this type of thing with molecular orbitals and energy level diagrams.